I'm here with my mother, Sarush Sanaya Aragi. She was born in Tehran, Iran in 1933. I'm going to be doing a short interview with her so we can get to know her life a little bit better. So what was it like growing up in Iran? Well, growing up in Iran, um, Iran is very, very different from here, especially on that time that it wasn't the, uh, our civilization and way of life was extremely different from what is in America or even in Europe. Uh, so I have no complaint uh, uh, about anything, except that women were not as, they didn't have as much freedom as they do have now. The, uh, the schools, uh, they were uh, not mixed, schools, boys were different, and girls went to different schools. Um, and um, the way we, but they also, they were religious, religious people, that they had to wear that black uh, veil or something, that usually they were much more conservative than they ever are in America. You were actually in medical school in Iran, is that right? Yes, that is correct. I went two years to medical school, and then my parents, they told me it is very dangerous in here. The hygiene and anything at the university and um, the future of a doctor for a woman is not the best thing to do. And if you want to really study medicine, you better go to Switzerland. So they. Uh, send me to, to the No, I came out. The reason was because my French was not that good and medical school was very hard and handling both and being far from my parents also, uh, it was very difficult for me to handle. So I just dropped out. So that must have been very difficult and challenging to go into a very different country. Very challenging to learn a new language and also. And a different culture also. Very different culture and also being alone was bad. So tell me about, you've been married twice. So tell me about your first marriage. How, where did you meet? Oh, um, in Iran it was, um, uh, the tradition was that that your friends and family and people that know you they try to make matchmaking they become matchmaker okay. and somebody in my family knew my first husband and he she introduced him to me and he lived as a matter of fact very close to my father's house so that was the first one Extremely. So you got married, and then how long were you married for? The first one was seven years. Okay. We couldn't have, we couldn't have any child together, so we gave up. We did everything. Even we came to London and saw many doctors, but they said it's impossible, probably. And so did you not consider adopting, or you wanted to have your own child? I didn't consider adoption because uh, it was not... Uh, something that people did in Iran on those days, they didn't. And what year do you think that was that you're talking about? The year that I divorced, um, 30 yeah. years old. Okay, so you were 30 divorced. years old when you divorced. Okay. Yes. And then you must have met my father quickly because you had me when you were 34. Yes, I knew him before I knew my first husband. Okay, so then you married my father, and then when you were pregnant, when you went to Seattle to um, have me there, was it your intent to divorce my father? No, my intention was not like that. So did he want, did he want, he wanted to have a super religious Muslim upbringing for his daughter and to wear a chador and all those things. So that scared you and you didn't want your child to be... Absolutely not. And, and was divorce a common thing in Iran? Or was that unusual for a woman to get divorced? No, it was quite unusual. And because uh, the Islam religion, they allowed a man to have uh, three uh, registered wives and as many as uh, type of a girlfriend type of a 
rights. What religion are you? Are you Muslim? Are you Christian? What is your religion? In my heart, I'm Christian. In your heart, you're Christian, but you were raised as Muslim? No, I wasn't raised as Muslim. And your father was in construction or real estate developer? Is that? Is no, that? he was an engineer uh, builder. Okay. Okay, and your mother was a housewife. Absolutely. Okay, and you've had two brothers and a sister. And yes. you're kind of in the middle. Yeah. And, um, What was your work situation like? My work then we um, start having a boutique and designing clothes for people. How was it leaving LA because your sister was in LA and she's your closest family member? Yes. How was it like to have that transition to go from LA to Nashville? It was very, very difficult and um, I'm going uh, uh, under a serious depression, but I had no other alternative. Is your depression because of the move or is it because of other things? No, because of a, a lot of other elements, because of my sickness, because of having nobody, no family, no friends, no nobody here, and then um, other things also. You were dead. Losing no. all the money in, that we had in Iran, we lost it. You were diagnosed with cancer twice in your life. The first time you were 60 something years old, 65? Yes, 60 years 60 old. 60 years old? Yes. And that was with lymphoma. And the second time was just a few years ago with yes. gastric cancer. You were told you had stage four cancer. Yes. And you stopped chemotherapy about a year ago. Uh, and, 10 months. But you're still alive. Well, yeah. So, so that's a good thing. So, yeah, well, so yeah. tell me what makes you happy. makes me happy is painting mm -hmm. um, well you're an incredible painter can we show show them her paintings right there let's go through each and then the last one is my absolute favorite one I absolutely love that. That is just gorgeous. I have, I have seen mostly respect when people see that I need help. They they do. That's great. Yeah, but in other states. Mm. Like especially a woman that is not accompanied by a man. Very bad. That they think older people are parasites. Oh, that's a terrible thing to think because they're going to be older themselves. I know, but that's what they think because they don't work, they don't add anything to the society. If they go somewhere, they are slow. Let's go back to Laura. So, Laura is a caregiver that you like. Yes. So, what does Laura do for you? How does she help you? Oh, she takes me um, to take to, to buy grocery and she brings them here. And she vacuums. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, she talks to me about her life and I talk to her about, about my life. Yeah. She's very sympathetic. Your brother recently passed away. Yes. And he was very, very close to you. Yes. He's younger. Yeah. About death. You that's something that you don't want to accept. I cannot. It's not that I don't want. No matter how poor you are, you can't pay the university somehow get the money or get a scholarship or whatever and study the more you study the happier you become and then have a good attitude in life okay well thank you so much mom 
Well, you're welcome. Give me a hug. Welcome.